If you consider the nature of an earthquake over time, several thousand years, several hundred thousand years, or even a million years, if you have an island region, for example, and this is like the sea here, um, over time this island might rise up out of the sea um, in association with a lot of a lot of earthquakes. There might be events spaced out in time. If you could watch this happen in a, sm a small amount of time, if you could see this million year period or however long uh, period sped up, you might see it just come out of the come out of the water. It might look like it's more or less moving consistently. But if you break it down, it, it's made up of these smaller movements. And these smaller movements um, necessarily interact with themselves through time in a sort of inertia. This is one of the, this is the theory underlying uh, the earthquake predictions uh, using astrotometry, that these movements uh, ripple through electromagnetically the, uh, the area surrounding the Earth, and that they return that a particular event will return uh, to uh, connect itself with the other events uh, in time, and so there's a sort of there's a sort of momentum that it has uh, with the other movements, with the other quakes, that can be sorted out by looking at the disturbances in the common carrier. If you don't have the background for this, I'll link a couple of. Uh, of videos that you can that you can look at to uh, familiarize yourself with the concept of hypertime and how hypertime is theorized to connect the Earth's physical moments through time and space. And if you consider the X-ray image of the Sun, just in the context of the observation itself, and not necessarily as an image of the Sun, what you'll notice is that a coronal hole is the absence of the higher energy forms from the sun. And if you think about conceptually what that higher energy would be when it arrived on the earth, if you think about the nature of x-rays, for example, as this energy from the sun would be penetrating the earth itself, the disturbance in that frequency of energy indicates a disturbance in the energy that actually is responsible for the movement of that mass through time, the physical matter on the Earth, is moved through time by all of the energy that's coming in from all around of it. And so this energy moving, moving the Earth is disrupted when there is going to be an earthquake. There's a disruption in it. And this disruption is understood to come from the previous disturbance in that uh, energy. And so there's a ripple effect through time space itself that's associated with the movement of the physical matter on the Earth that is reflected in the, in the higher energy forms that we're seeing when we image the sun. And so in the present situation, what we saw was a really large coronal hole that preceded a bunch of a flurry of a bunch of earthquakes. Because of the size of a particular event, like if this if this event is a much larger event than the past event, what might happen is the size of the event itself might determine how far into the past or how far into the future the the effect on the next event will be. So there may be a difference in the size of the event and the amount of time beforehand the coronal hole is seen on the solar corona. And so in relation to the energy that we perceive as coming from the coronal hole, there is a hypersymmetric relationship between the disturbance in that energy and the movement of the Earth through the common carrier. And so the size of the coronal hole is theorized to be proportional to the size of the earthquake in a, a physical sense. And 
what I'm suspecting is the relationship in time also changes with the magnitude of the earthquake. And so what I'm suspecting is that a very large earthquake may produce a hypertime shadow in the form of a coronal hole earlier than would a smaller earthquake. And so the indication is that because this is a larger earthquake that is, that is approaching in time space, that the coronal hole appeared ahead of time, farther ahead of time than would have been if the earthquake had been smaller. And so in forecasting, the, uh, we're going to have to look at the duration of the coronal hole because the duration of the coronal hole, in a sense, will indicate um, the magnitude. And I think when we see when we see a really, really large coronal hole, it's probably going to um, associate with a, a longer event. I mean, a longer coronal hole event, and that that and that that will be uh, a, a larger foreshadow, a farther ahead look at what will be the earthquake. That's the that's the theory right now. That's my speculation on it. And so there's also this issue about whether or not the earthquake happens at the beginning or at the end of the coincidental uh, geomagnetic disturbance. The solar scientists have um, uh, reasoned out that there is a geomagnetic disturbance on the Earth from the coronal hole in the sun. And this takes between uh, four and five days usually. To arrive, and we see this geomagnetic disturbance on the Earth in the form of uh, auroras and instrumentation on the ground picks up uh, changes in the Earth's magnetic field. If you analyze the mechanics of a standing wave, there's a harmonic relationship between the part that is standing and the part that is creating what is standing. And so the concept in astrotometry with respect to an, uh, analyzing the earthquakes is that these events in time are responsible for the, the standing part of the wave that is the, is the, the general movement of, of the uh, whatever, whatever piece of, of matter it is through time. And so as the standing part of the wave, the earthquake itself can affect the amplitude of that wave by coinciding with one side or another of, of the uh, of the pattern that has already been established in the common carrier. And so there's uh, the potential for a larger event if the quake actually coincides with the, the larger part of the return uh, wave as it, as it comes back through, as it ripples back through time space. Last year's large earthquake in Szechuan coincided with X-ray signatures timed almost perfectly with the quakes themselves. And if you consider the nature of an earthquake, when you have a huge movement of Earth, theoretically there is going to be uh, X-rays that are produced from the collision of the matter on that level. And if you think about the nature of that as it relates to the nature of what we've discovered about the photon spin entanglement, you can understand the hypersymmetry of the event itself. In other words, the x-rays that are given off from the, the Earth colliding with itself is coincident with x-rays that are traveling to the Earth hypersymmetrically from the place where the last movement occurred. And so there's a sort of, there's a sort of um, uh, unity with the nature of the photon spin entanglement that it catches itself in time, and that is, that is the resolution in astrotometry.